Hey friends, welcome back. And before we jump into this tutorial, I want to thank The Coldest Water for partnering with me to make this video. The Coldest Water makes these awesome water bottles. They keep your water cold for over 36 hours and it's so convenient. This is like the best water bottle I've ever owned. I've been using it for past couple weeks and it's keeping me hydrated when I make tutorials like this one. But yeah, if you guys are interested in getting your own water bottle, check the link in the description and use promo code boys to get 10% off your entire order highly recommend these and thank you so much but yeah let's jump into the video hey friends welcome back to the dragon knight tutorial series and we are going to start on some shaping today um, we're gonna see how much we actually do but we're gonna get a lot of it started um, we may or may not have multiple shaping videos um, so yeah this is probably part one as well yeah, let's get into it. All right, the first thing we are going to work on is on the back. So we have these extra flaps right here. Um, you might be wondering like, what are these for? And I grab our completed one. You can kind of see it's just an extra detail in the back so that the 360 of this model is all kind of detailed. So it's like the back of the battle dress. Um, now, honestly, you can do whatever you want with this, but I'm just gonna show how I shaped it. Uh, there's quite a lot of paper here, so you can you can you can do your own thing if you want. Uh, but what we're going to do is we're going to take a flap right here. And they should be orientated like this, and I am going to fold from this corner and not quite along the edge, but a little bit outside of it, so that we get this kind of a weird shape going on here. And we're going to do the same thing on the other side. And what you want to do here is you're kind of eyeballing like how, like if it looks good, um, if it's out enough. Um, you don't want it perfectly straight down. You want them to be splayed out a little bit. So kind of like that. Um, I can pull it a little bit more, but that, that that's just to give some depth. Um, like that. And then from here, another small little detail and you have to be careful of this we're basically gonna fold uh, bevel around the outside so let's start with this inside corner and you're just going to make very tiny valley folds like very very tiny all along the edge and this is just to give it a border and it it makes it look like its own thing again super small detail but it's it's kind of kind of nice to make it not empty so just very carefully go around the edge. Um, probably go slower than I am going right now, but I'm just kind of showing you guys what it would be like to do one. And then I'll leave the rest to y'all. Just like that. And you can notice I'm folding in the air because the paper is really thin. So it might be a little easier to line things up. And for me, it's can often be more precise to do it in the air where the paper is under my control. Just like that. And then we got one more right here. And this top one, since it's where the other valley fold was, it kind of will lock this flap into place. Uh, so that's why I'm doing it last. Like that. And there you go. It's a, it's a very small detail but it will make the back of the model feel more complete, more shaped out, just like that. And we got a little board around here. So it's like a little detail. Um, but yeah, you're gonna do the same thing with this side, um, which I'm going to do off camera, um, but that's how you do the back side. And we're gonna come back to the back in a little bit, but we got some other things to do first. All right, so we got both of these done. So now we're going to flip our model around and we are going to work on the sword arm. And yep, here we are, we're doing our fingers. So I'm just gonna show how to do one of these to save time uh, because they're all the same. Uh, and then I'll show how to do the thumb. Uh, but yeah, let's get into it. All right, so we take a look here. We have four fingers basically, and we are going to thin them out. So how you do that is you take the edge and actually i'll show the pre-creasing for this uh, but you just valley fold an angle bisector as much as you can basically 
like that. And what it's going to turn into is a sync fold. Um, but I like to actually uh, pre-crease these all at once. Um, and I know you might lose some levels of precision on this, but for me, the important point is as long as the actual finger point is folded, then that's that's the important part. The back side doesn't really matter too much. And you actually only have to do three of these because this fourth point right here, or this fourth um, flap, uh, you can just actually valley fold this here because you, again, since we have the thumb as a two unit flap, we don't actually need to sink fold this flap. Um, yeah, so like that, and I guess I'll make it a little bit better. <laughs> Uh, but you're going to do that on the opposite side as well. And it might help you to unfold the sword just a little bit. So unswivel it just a little bit like this. Um, so that you can get these pre-creases in place. Because it's going to be a little bit difficult with the sword upright. So as you can see, I put it to the side a little bit. And then now I am... Uh, pre-creasing the fingers like that and last one there pre-crease it really strong because this is going to get a little tricky and do the other side and honestly these fingers might take you a really long time so again if you have to pause the video uh, definitely do so to do these fingers because yeah, they're, they're a little bit dexterous, but if you practice these, you'll get really good at sync folds. Um, so here I'll show you one. We're just going to do the outside one first. And I like to do both of these sync folds at the same time because it makes it a little easier. Let's get this into view like this. And we're going to start off with the sword sided one just because also that's a little bit harder. And when we pre-creased it, there's only two areas that we have to invert creases. So one's going to be right here. And so I'm just using my fingernail and my finger on the inside and then just pinching to invert that crease. And then same thing along this edge. I'm just going to gently invert that crease. And yes, this is all in the air, but it's not too difficult. It might just take a little bit of practice and a little bit of time, but you'll get used to it. And once all the creases are inverted, then it makes the sink fold a lot easier to do. So let's show from this angle so you guys can kind of see that the pre-creases are flipped. And I like to start in this corner because it's easiest to start collapsing it. And there might be easier ways to do this. So whatever your preferred way of uh, sink folding is, then just go for that. But for me, this is the way I do it. Um, There you go, just like that. And as you can see, we still have the other side to do, but once one side's done, the second side can kind of just match up with it. You just don't want to unfold too much where you undo the opposite side. So again, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to invert this crease like that. And then we're going to invert this one. And this arm is getting in the way. like that and then we are going to start the collapse like so fold this flap up with the finger and valley fold it back into place and there we have one finger and so yeah as you can see you are I guess you only have to do three three of these which isn't too much um, but go ahead and do that and then we'll come back and uh, don't worry if it takes you a long time. Definitely be careful on these because the cleaner your fingers are, the better. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll come back very soon. All right, so we have completed all the fingers here. It was a total of six sink folds, three on each side. Um, just like that. And we, we have four fingers here. And we're not going to splay the... Oh, I guess we can. Okay. So now to shape these out, basically what I like to do is I take the very edge one 
And this is going to be our pinky finger. So it's going to be small. So you can actually reverse fold this guy or just swivel it out really far down. Um, and even if it takes up a lot of the paper, that's good because we want it to be small. It's kind of like that. And then we're going to take the next one and swivel it out as well. Kind of in the same manner. Just like that. And for the next finger, instead of swiveling it down, I actually just take the index finger right here and pull it forward. Like that. And again, it kind of, it's, it's like they're mini crimp folds. Um, but basically, something like this. And then you just kind of want to position these fingers how you want them. And normally, because these sink folds are kind of difficult and if the paper you're using is very small, your fingers won't be very sharp. So what I like to do is I will take a pair of tweezers um, and fold these in half. So I don't have tweezers on me right now, but you'd, you'd fold these in half and pinch them. Um, and if you do this very carefully, then I'll, I'll just show it on here really quick. Which, okay, I guess it proves you don't really need tweezers. But you can start to thin out the fingers, just like that. Um, the only hard one to really do is the pinky finger, so just be just be careful as you fold. It's kind of like that. Um, and what this helps with is actually curling the fingers down uh, to make it look like it's grabbing the sword. But we're going to shape out the sword first, and then we'll worry about the fingers later. Um, because, yeah, we've got some more things to do. But there you go. You can kind of see how it's uh, taking form. And you can mess around with this for a long time uh, to make the hand look good. But, yeah, that's 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 the gist of it. Um, but now from here, we have the thumb, which we're going to face our guy this way, belly side up. And our thumb is tucked in. To th it should be this flap right here. And basically what we're going to do is we're going to thin this out into a thumb. And so we have two bigger flaps here. Basically, I'm just going to valley fold them to this side. Do the same thing here. That way we get a point in the middle. And the sloppy-ish stuff is hidden like this. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to valley fold the top layer forward. So there's, there's a top layer and a back layer like that and we're going to do that on both sides to thin it out and then the back layer I am going to valley fold it but in between the flat so I'm just going to tuck it in basically to that flap and that just minimizes the amount of flaps that are out in the open and it kind of locks the back guys out but even if it's a if the flaps aren't fully folding in basically all we're doing is really thinning out the thumb so it's like that as you can see this is not clean by any means uh, because our last step is actually just to reverse fold this whole flap up and you want it to sit kind of behind the sword like this um, and I know it's really far away from the other fingers, but that's okay for now because uh, once we fold in the hilt, then the hand will kind of stretch back towards the thumb. Uh, so just leave it here for now. And basically all this guy's here is for is he's going to curl around the hilt kind of like that. But once again, we need to fold the hilt in first before we do that. So just leave him here for now. Uh, since it's a two unit flap, it's very adjustable. Just make sure that it's kind of thin, you know, you don't want it to be too thick. So get those layers tucked in, pinch it however you need. And we're going to leave our hand like that for now. Uh, because before we do the sword, we're going to do a little bit with the arms. All right, so we have completed the hand and we can put it back up here. Uh, and now we are going to work on the arms positioning a little bit and before we do anything if we take a cross section of our 
fold, we'll see it collapses like this, basically. And we're taking a look at the neck, right? This neck section has a unit of two, and then there's the transition unit and whatnot. But basically what we're gonna do is if you lift the head up, you'll see there's two units here. And I want to valley fold to divide the one closest to the chest in half. Um, and basically the, the easy reference point is that when you do this, the, let me see if I see it, the crease line will line up with this edge right here. So just kind of like this. And that just gives us a little bit of space um, for the rest of the parts. And what we're going to do here is, do you remember where in the last part we did all these spread sinks or spread squashes? We're actually going to open this up. And as you can see, I have my finger basically pinching the exact spot I am at. And it's going to do another kind of squash like this to get the arm to shoot out the side. Uh, and now the positioning you want this arm to be in is basically like right around the shoulder uh, because it's going to curl over. But we want it a little bit above so that it doesn't seem too disconnected from the body. Just like that. And I'll show the back side because this is a, the placement of this is important. Um, and it's a little confusing at the same time. So kind of like this. Uh, and to note, we have basically we have two one unit flaps like this. Don't worry about those, but just make sure they're intact. You don't want to mess those up. So we're going to use them a little later, but just like that. Um, and we are going to do the exact same thing with the sword arm. So find the spot that we spread squashed. Um, and then try to kind of squash it in the same way in the same spot. Um, however, the difference with the sword arm is it won't completely open all the way. As you can see where the thumb is, it's not going to open, uh, but that's okay. Just kind of push that out for now and yeah, just, just leave it there. We're going we're gonna to deal with it later. Um, and so that is basically how to get the arms out. And it might not lay exactly flat, but it's relatively decent enough. Now we're going to flip it over. And here's what I was talking about a little earlier. And we're going to be worrying about these guys. Um, so it doesn't quite matter which one you do. Technically you can do both. Uh, but let's start with one. And what you're going to look at is the flaps that are trapped underneath here. Um, so l actually, you know what? We don't have to do too many. Let's take two flaps. So if you find two layers on this side, you're just going to free them up a little bit like this. And by keeping it in place, you can start to see if I pull it to the left like that, then do you see how it's creating a valley fold along this flap like that, right? And basically that valley fold can complete if I pull it all the way and fold this back down. Uh, but we're gonna need the bottom as well. The bottom will be the same, so I'm gonna flip it over like this to show you. And so if I open this up a little bit, you can start to see, well, that actually just freed all the way like that. And then it creates a uh, kind of a new flap like this. All right, so we can actually just fold that down. And that'll let us complete this side like that. And it closes the back. Um, and since we have a little tab right here, we can actually use that and just stick this entire flap like inside the layers of the other side. Kind of like this. Um, however, this doesn't look too great because we still have this crease here. So what I like to do is I, I'll do the exact same thing, um, but with like one flap from the other side, just like this. And then that really kind of locks off the closed back. And so now that we have that, we basically have a closed back model, um, but basically it hides all those pleats and keeps it together. So. 
Um, if you want for now, you can just clip this in place and leave it like that. But I really like it. This it carries it a long way. It makes the back a lot more enjoyable to look at. Um, but yeah, that's 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 another little detail for the shaping, just as such. All right, so you can see we are really making a good ways um, away. Uh, we're not going to worry about the chest yet or the helmet. We're going to do those um, in a different part, I think. And in turn, I think we're going to work on the sword. So now the sword, you kind of have free reign on what you want to do. But I will show you how I did this one. Which, uh, let's just analyze this for now. So as you can see, we have the spread squashes on the outside, and then we have the sword guard, which turns into the hilt, which is smaller than the sword. And then it has another little bevel on the end. And then as we can see, we curled the fingers around once that's done, and you can see another little fold right here. Let me get this guy out of the way. Our fold right there, that basically makes the hand. Um, and on outside, we just have some 3D shaping there. But on the arm, we also have the spread squashes open. And you can see it kind of squeezes into the wrist here. Um, and then we'll just worry about this arm for now. So we're going to keep that in mind as we work on this because it's going to kind of depend on it. So here we can see we have our spread squashes. And so our arm is basically going to be faced out like this. However, our wrist curls in. So you can make kind of a, um, a reverse fold like right here. It's, it's kind of just a, a mush fold. Uh, but if you want to be a little bit less mushy, then just, just be really careful. Uh, but you don't have to fully initialize it yet. You just kind of want our arm to be outside like that right and then let's do the sword so this has to invert basically so we're going to fold it to the outside like this so it used to be a valley fold but now it's going to be a mountain fold like this um, but as you can see when you get to the bottom of the sword or the hilt it doesn't really want to go that direction so this is where actually we will create the handguard and let's just take a look at this handguard really quick so you kind of see that let's get a good angle hopefully <laughs> um, it's going to push out and over. So let's say like right about, so we have a point like right here from our spread squash. And then we have the line from the grid. We're gonna go a little bit below that, like almost halfway. And we have another grid line right here. Let me grab a pen. And then our grid line like right there. Let's close this. And you can start to see where the paper is bending. But I'm just going to fold in two mountain folds right here. And when I do that, you can kind of see if I close this, it creates like a, uh, it basically creates the shape of the handguard. Um, but we have two edges basically right here. And that's where I'm also going to fold along back the other way. See that? So along the edge here, I'm putting folds back. So this is kind of like a crimp, uh, big crimp fold that sticks out to the side. Uh, and we're going to do that on both sides here. It's like this. And so if I show the top view, you can see that that's where the handguard is coming from. 
You just want to make sure it's it's pretty even um, so that the sword can really fold close like this. And if we if we hold her, let's get this guy out of the way now. Belly side up. And for now, we can have our sword kind of angled like this, where the handguard isn't out yet. And as you can see, here's the other side of it. Um, and that's just to really crease things in. But to shape it out, we basically just pull it into place and just kind of fold it into position like this. And that's our handguard. And what really seals the deal is now the hilt. And so the hilt, if you've done my samurai or seen it, basically this whole, we're going to fold a mountain fold down the middle of the hilt and the left side is going to tuck in behind the right side. So again, that might be a little bit confusing, but we're going to start doing a mountain fold through this whole hilt flap and really try to make sure at least the end point is even in half. Um, as it gets closer to the handguard, it won't be as even because it's kind of wonky. But like this, see how I'm pinching it? And then from here, once I pinched it, it's going to twist a little bit like that so that the folded edge faces the fingers. And basically, you're just trying to pull it to a position that it sits underneath the handguard um, without being too obvious that there's a crease there. Kind of like that. And if you really want to, you can even have it again. Just Actually, we probably will do that. Um, so we'll fold one more and then we'll fold our little bevel. Um, but basically, this we're gonna just fold a mountain fold uh, as kind of more of a textured detail than like a, a unit. So I'm just gonna wait on that a little bit. But on our other one, you notice we had the little bevel on the guard here. So let's just fold that in now. And all it is from this point is just a small valley fold up, and then you just refold our mountain fold and. If you get this, which is like what we're getting right now, where some of the layers are popping out, really just try to push those back in to the hilt um, to hide them. Because the, the, the way this looks cleaner is if you can hide the remaining uh, pleats that come out. Uh, but we can worry about that in like the final, final shaping. Um, but now, you can see our hand is in a really awkward spot right here. So what we want to do is we want to come around this way. Right, and this is where our thumb is here. And basically you're just going to pleat this whole hand backwards until the fingers are where they should be. Um, and so you can, you can eyeball this a little bit. Um, but it's going to be under the handguard and then where it can basically grab the hilt. So you're going to have to look at this a lot and eyeball it. There's no real reference point because depending on how thick your paper is or how clean you folded, then this is all going to be a little bit different. But I think mine is good just about here. Let's check on this side. Uh, could be a little bit farther back. It's like here. There we go. Then we have the sword here, the hand, hand guard, like that. And then what I recommend for now is you can see my sword is bending forward off the hilt. Is um, and then obviously these pleats are really coming out is I would grab some clips, so like some clothespins or 
Probably not paper clips. Anything that has like a, a grab maneuver will be a lot easier. But um, depending on how big your paper is, I like to pinch these guys um, because these really help the sword to set in place. It's kind of like this. Um, and then. Um, yeah, you can you can do the same for the handle to to get this stuff all tucked in and the hand and whatnot. Um, but ultimately, from here is once you have it clamped, I really recommend that you take some MC or some white glue and uh, you close the sword. Uh, and you MC it so that it stays closed. And you do the same for right underneath the handle. Because unless you have like foil paper, um, then this will open. So, you know, I know I know glue and stuff. If you are if you're still controversy on it, which you really shouldn't be, then your other option is to make a double tissue or double paper basically where there's foil in the corner. Um, and then you would have foil to shape in the paper. But I mean, if you attach the foil, you're using glue to attach the foil. So again, it's it's whatever you want to do. If you're really stingy about glue, then go ahead and not use it. But yeah, whatever you want, uh, use that to make it look clean because the cleanliness, the aesthetics is much more important than whatever your feelings about glue or not glue is. Um, so yeah, make it make it look nice, especially if you're putting in all this effort. If you want, you can put in a wire. Actually, I don't really recommend using a wire in here because you're going to see it through the sword and that won't look very good. Um, but yeah, do some options to make it strong and look nice. Uh, and as you can see with here, there's basically just fold some consequence, fold, it just folds diagonal. We're going to shape out the arms in a different video uh, for like more of the final shaping. But basically, this is the gist of the sword. And that is that. All right, and I think that is the end of this part. I hope this is a little bit shorter than some of the other ones. We're gonna break up the shaping into more edible pieces, uh, but great job. Uh, these things probably weren't very easy. Um, and yeah, we'll, we'll get to the next part of the shaping in the next tutorial, which will come very soon. So thank you guys for tuning in. Um, don't forget to check out the links in the description for paper. Check out my website and check out coldest water bottles. Um, but yeah, see you guys very, very soon. Bye-bye. All this origami, all this origami, all this origami got me.